Hello and welcome back to the channel Science Maths and Engineering. Today we are going to discuss the APSC Irrigation 2021 Mechanical Engineering Paper Part 4. So let's get started. Question number 76. The chemical formula for refrigerant R717 is A. CHCl2F B. C2H4 C. NH3 or D. C2H2Cl. So the answer is NH3 that is ammonia. So ammonia is known as R717. So we'll go to the next question. A mass of 4 kg rests on a horizontal plane. A person gradually leaves the plane on one end and the mass begins to slide when the angle of inclination is 15 degree with the horizontal. The coefficient of static friction between the surfaces is a 0 0.814, B 1.5, C 1.87 or D 0 0.27. So the answer is D 0 0.27. So as the person gradually leaves the plane and the ma uh, mass begins to slide at an inclination of 15 degree, that means angle of repose is equal to 15 degree. Now, angle of friction is equal to angle of repose. Therefore, angle of friction is equal to 15 degree. Now, coefficient of static friction mu is equal to 10 of the angle of friction. Therefore, mu is equal to 10 of 15 degree which is equal to 0 0.268 or approximately 0 0.27. So, we will go to the next question. Three forces 2P, 3P and 4P act along three sides of an equilateral triangle taken in order. Then the magnitude and line of action of the resultant force are A. 2.732p and 210 degree B. 1.732p and 310 degree C. 1.732p and 210 degree or D. 0.732p and 210 degree so the answer is C, 1.732p and 210 degree. So let us see how we get it. So we have the three forces, 2p, 3p and 4p acting along the sides of a triangle BCA taken in order. Now we are taking BC along the x axis. Okay. So this uh, force 3p. Uh, along here uh, CA is acting at an inclination 60 degree. So we, when we resolve it, the 3P sine 60 degree is along the positive Y axis and 3P cos 60 degree is along the negative X axis. Similarly, the force 4P acting along AB is at an angle 60 degree with the horizontal. So 4P sine 60 degree is along the negative y direction and 4p cos 60 degree is along the negative x direction. Therefore, the forces in x direction are fx is equal to 2p minus 3p cos 60 degree minus 4p cos 60 degree which is equal to minus 1.5p. Similarly, fy would be equal to 3p sin 60 degree minus 4p sin 60 degree which is equal to minus root 3 by 2p. Therefore, the resultant R is equal to fx square plus fy square to the power half. So, R is equal to root over 3p after calculation and so which is equal to 1.732p. Okay. Now, what is the theta? Theta is equal to 10 inverse fy by fx which is equal to 10 inverse 1 by root 3. Now, as fx and fy are both negative, therefore theta is equal to 210 degree. Okay, so our answer is C, that the resultant is 1.72p and the line of action of the resultant is 210 degree from the x-axis. So, we will go to the next question. A rigid ball of weight 100 Newton is suspended with the help of a string from a hanger. The ball is pulled by a horizontal force F until the string makes an angle 30 degree with the vertical. The magnitude of F in Newton is A 
57.74 b 173.21 c 50 or d 58.25 so the answer is a 57.74 so we have the ball attached by the string now as we have the horizontal force f and this string is making 30 degree with the vertical so the free body diagram looks like this where f is uh, along the horizontal direction 100 newton is along the vertical direction and they, that's why make an angle of 90 degree and this uh, string makes uh, and makes an angle 120 degree uh, 120 degree with uh, force f so if we use Lamy's theorem we get f by sine of 150 degree is equal to 100 newton divided by sine of 120 degree from which we get that f is equal to 57.74 newton okay so we will go to the next question two forces p and q have angle of inclination theta between them if alpha is the angle which the resultant makes with the horizon with the direction of p then tan of alpha is equal to a q cos theta by p plus q sin theta b p sin theta by p q plus p cos theta c q cos theta by p q plus p sin theta or d q sin theta by p plus q cos theta so the answer is d that is tan of alpha is equal to q sin theta by p plus q cos theta in general uh, in general theta and alpha are interchanged which means that the generally the p and q the angle between them is uh, alpha and the angle of inclination that the resultant makes with p is known as theta and in that case we have tan of theta is equal to q sin alpha by p plus q cos alpha which is uh, which is generally used in our textbooks so we'll go to the next question an inextensible massless string passes over a frictionless pulley two weights 100 newton and 200 newton attached at the two ends are released from rest the tensor in the spring would be a 100 newton b 300 newton c 133.33 newton or d 33.33 newton so the answer is c 133.33 newton now let us see how we get it now this is the frictionless pulley we have this 100 newton on the left hand side and 200 newton on the right hand side now because of them they have a tension t now as they are released uh, this 100 newton let let us assume that it has a mass m1 so this will go up with an acceleration a and this 200 newton mass will go down with an acceleration a now if we will first determine the mass m1 and m2 using g is equal to 9.81 so m1 g is equal to 100 newton which implies m1 is equal to 10.197 kg and m2 is equal to 20.394 kg now this situation that is a uh, tension that is the tension we have uh, on the left hand side that where we have tension the 100 newton force and m1 a is depicted here so from here we get the equation t minus 100 is equal to m1 a which implies t is equal to 100 plus m1 into a similarly in the, the right hand side we have 200 minus t is equal to m2 a which implies t is equal to 200 minus m2 a so solving these equations we get a is equal to 3.269 meter per second square and the tension t is equal to 133.33 newton so we'll go to the next one a circular disk of radius r is rolling without slip on a horizontal plane with velocity v the velocity at the point p is a root over 3 v root over 3 into v that is b root over 3 v c 3 into root v or d p by root 3 so the answer is a that is root over 3 into v now let us 
defined let us see how we can get it we know omega is equal to v by r that is v is the velocity r is the radius of the disk okay now let uh, a be the point of contact of the disk with the ground so this is the instantaneous center of rotation so this is the instantaneous center of rotation now uh, if vp is the velocity of the point then omega is equal to vp divided by the radius of the instantaneous and uh, instantaneous center of rotation that is uh, vp divided by ap the distance ap now angle pob is equal to 30 degree it is given so angle aop is equal to 120 degree again oa and op are equal as they are the radius uh, of the this so this oap becomes an isosceles triangle so angle oap is equal to angle opa which is equal to now 30 degree as the sum of the three angles was 180 one is 120 so the other should be 30 and 30. now using sine rule we have ap divided by sine of angle aop is equal to op divided by sine of angle oap so from here we get ap is equal to angles sine of angle aop into op divided by sine of angle oap which is equal to therefore ap is equal to root 3 into r therefore from our previous equation we have vp is equal to omega into ap or v by r is into root 3 into r so vp is equal to root over 3 into v okay i hope uh, the derivation is clear so we'll go to the next question if a particle at a is under the action of three forces p q and 600 newton as shown in the figure the values of p and q are respectively a 500 newton and 450 newton b 300 newton and 520 newton c 450 newton and 150 newton or d 520 newton and 300 newton so yes we can see these all three forces are acting at a point a so we may use the lamis theorem so with that the answer is d how using lamis theorem we have p by sine of 120 degree is equal to q divided by sine of 150 degree is equal to 600 divided by sine of 90 degree which implies that p is equal to 520 newton and q is equal to 300 newton so we'll go to the next question a ball of mass m is projected with initial velocity u making an angle alpha with the vertical the maximum height attained by the ball is a u sin alpha by z b u cos alpha by z c u cos alpha whole square by 2z or d u sin alpha whole square by 2z so the answer is d u sin alpha whole square divided by 2z so this is a very simple this has a very simple derivation in the projectile motion so we are not getting into it so we'll go to the next question when three coplanar forces are in equilibrium a any of the forces must pass through the intersection of the other two b all the forces must be parallel to one another c any two of the forces may intersect but the third force must not pass through the point of intersection or d all of the above so the answer is a that when three coplanar forces are in equilibrium any of the forces must pass through the intersection of the other two forces why because these three forces must be concurrent that means these three forces must pass through a common point so that is the requirement for three coplanar forces to be in equilibrium so we'll go to the next question a stone takes six seconds to reach the ground after it is dropped from a tower if the stone is dropped after two seconds of its fall and then released again how much more time will it take to reach the ground uh, we have to take z is equal to 
10 meter per second square. So the options are A 4.6 seconds, B 5.6 seconds, C 6.6 seconds or D 7.6 seconds. So the answer is B 5.6 seconds. So here what we do, we first determine the height of the tower. Now I have taken S, you can take H, H would be equal to UT plus half of AT square. Since the ball is uh, dropped, uh, uh, so it was initially at rest, it was uh, dropped from rest, so u is equal to 0. So from here we get a is 10, we have given and t was 6 seconds. So from that, from this equation, we get s is equal to 180 meter. Now, the stone is uh, stopped after falling for 2 seconds. So s1 would be equal to how much? 0 into 2 plus half into 10 into 2 square which is equal which implies s1 is equal to 20 meter so our question says the ball was stopped okay so our question says if the stone is stopped after two seconds of its fall so after two seconds it was stopped so it went only 20 meters now how much is left 160 meter is left so for this 160 meter how much time will it take now as the ball is stopped means that is it is at rest now. So as we release it, so u would be again 0. So we have 160 is equal to 0 into t plus half into 10 into t square. So we have t square is equal to 32 or t is equal to 5.6 seconds. So the stone will take 5.6 seconds more to reach the ground. So we will go to the next question. The state or condition of a vibrating particle in relation to its position and direction of motion is referred to as A. Oscillation, B. Phase, C. Amplitude or D. Frequency. So the answer is B. Phase. So this is one of the basic uh, definition in vibration where the state or condition of the vibrating particle in relation to its position and direction of motion is known as phase. So we will go to the next question. Vibrations are generally classified on the basis of A. Acting force on the body. B. Stress induced in the supporting medium. C. Both A and B or D. None of the above. So the answer is C. It is uh, vibrations are generally classified on the basis of acting force as free and force vibration and also on the basis of stress induced in the supporting medium as longitudinal transverse and torsional vibration. Okay, so we will go to the next question. The Alembert's principle states that A. The system of forces acting on a body in motion is in equilibrium with the inertia force of the body B, the system of forces acting on a body in equilibrium is in static equi is in static in motion is in static equilibrium with the inertia force of the body C, the system of forces acting on a body in rest is in static equilibrium with the inertia force of the body or D, the system of forces acting on a body in rest is in dynamic equilibrium with the inertia force of the body. So, whether the system of forces acting on the body is acting on the body is in motion or rest, and whether it is in static equilibrium or dynamic equilibrium is the question. So, as we know, the Alembert's principle states that the system of forces acting on the body in motion is in dynamic equilibrium with the inertia force of the body. So, with the Alembert's principle. The system of forces are in motion and are in dynamic equilibrium with the inertia force of the body. Okay, so we'll go to the next question. The frictional force encountered after the motion begins is called A. Frictional resistance, B. Kinematic friction, C. Dynamic friction, or D. Levitic friction. So the answer is C. Dynamic friction. Now, as the body is, has started to move, so this frictional force encountered is known as dynamic friction. Had it been not moving, then it would have been kinematic friction. And had it been on the verge of moving, then it would have been the limiting force of friction. Okay, so we will go to the next question. 
the center of gravity of a solid cone lies on the axis at a height a one third of the total height of the from the base b two thirds of the total height from the base c one fourth of the total height from the base or d one sixth of the total height from the base so the answer is c one fourth of the total height from the base now since this is a solid cone so the center of gravity would be at a height of one fourth of the total height from the base however had it been a triangle well then it would have been one third of the total height from the base so we'll go to the next question factor of safety is defined as a ultimate load by allowable load b ultimate stress by allowable stress or c design stress by uh, ultimate stress by design stress or d all of the above so the answer is d all of the above as factor of safety can be defined as ultimate load by allowable load or ultimate stress ultimate stress by allowable stress or as ultimate stress by design stress so we'll go to the next question an apparatus using or applying the mechanical power having several parts each with a definite function and together performing certain kinds of work is termed as a engine b structure c machine or d body so the answer is c machine okay so we'll go to the next question a body accelerated at the rate of 5 meter per second square starting from the rest the displacement in 5 seconds is nearly a 38 meter b 96 meter c 62.5 meter or d 5 meter so here acceleration a is 5 meter per second square initial velocity u is 0 as it is starting from rest and the time is 5 seconds so we need to find the displacement s so displacement is given by s equal to ut plus half of at square which implies s is equal to 0 into 5 plus half into 5 into 5 square as acceleration is 5 and time is 5 so our displacement is 62.5 meter so we'll go to the next question the flywheel attached to a motor goes to 1000 rpm in 6 seconds the number of revolutions made is nearly equal to a 25 b 100 c 50 or d 200 now the flywheel attached to a motor goes to 1000 rpm it says that means what initially the rpm was at the rest initially the flywheel was at rest and then it has some angular acceleration and it goes to an rpm of 1000 in 6 seconds so the answer is c 50 revolutions how omega not was 0 n equal to 1000 rpm at t is equal to 6 seconds so omega the final omega is equal to 2 pi n by 60 which is equal to 100 pi by 3 now omega is equal to omega not plus alpha into t so from here we get alpha is equal to 50 by 9 into pi therefore angular displacement in 6 seconds is given by theta is equal to omega not into t plus half into alpha into t square but from here we get theta is equal to 100 pi now angular displacement in one revolution is 2 pi so total number of revolutions in 6 second would be theta divided by 2 pi which is equal to 100 pi divided by 2 pi or 50 revolutions okay so we'll go to the next question dynamics of machines is the branch of theory of machines which deals with a study of relative motion of various machine elements without the consideration of forces b the study of relative motion of various machine elements with the consideration of forces c the study of absolute motion of various machine elements with the consideration of forces or d the study of forces acting on various machine elements so the answer is 
the dynamics of machines is the branch of theory of machines which deals with the study of forces acting on various machine elements okay now kinematics of machine is the branch of theory of machines which deals with the study of relative motion of various machine elements without the consideration of forces okay so we'll go to the next question a shaft rotating in a bearing is an example of a lower pair b higher pair c both lower pair and higher pair or d none of the above so the answer is a lower pair as it has surface or area contact had there been point or line contact then it would have been a higher pair okay so we'll go to the next question a four bar linkage has the length of the shortest longest and the other linkages respectively as s comma s l p and q the condition for Grassoff's link is a l plus p less than s plus q b l plus s less than p plus q c l plus p equal to s plus q or d l plus q greater than s plus p so the answer is d l plus s less than or equal to p plus q which means that the longest link plus the shortest link must be less than or equal to the sum of the other two links so we'll go to the next question Ackerman steering gear mechanism is preferred over Davis steering gear mechanism because a Ackerman steering gear mechanism is on the back of the front wheel and it consists of turning pairs b Ackerman steering gear mechanism is the most economical c Ackerman steering gear mechanism is on the back of the front wheel and it has no turning pair or d Ackerman steering gear mechanism is on the rear wheels and it consists of turning pairs so the answer is a Ackerman steering gear mechanism is on the back of the front wheel and it consists of turning pairs okay so we'll go to the next question the arrangement of three links forming a triangle is a or n a kind of option a kinematic chain b structure c mechanism or d inversion of mechanism so the answer is b structure now as the links form a triangle so they have no relative motion between each other so this that is why it is known as a structure okay now these three links they are locked together so they form a structure so with this we come to an end to our APSC irrigation 2021 mechanical engineering paper so thank you